Hey guys, what is going on out there today? Uh, welcome to another episode of the Global Hunting Podcast. I am Brent Abel, Jr. In fact, Senior, Senior, if he was still with us, would have celebrated his 103rd birthday yesterday, which would have been May 6th. Wow. Which uh, he he's 15 years older than the great Willie Mays, and so... He and Willie share the same birth date, uh, 15 oh, years cool. apart. But we used to, you know, we were, at least when I was, you know, a teenager and, you know, an adult and loved baseball and thought I'd be a smart aleck. Every time we get to my dad's birthday, go to the party, I'd stand up and go, well, let's give a cheer to happy birthday to Willie Mays. That's right. <laughs> it never got old. <laughs> it's just worked every time. It worked every time. And, um in fact, I'm going to share a little story here. Uh, well, this is Jeff Jacklitz, by the way, over here. I need to, you know, let everyone. If this is your <laughs> first time with us, first time with us. Not my first time with you. It could be somebody else's no, first time listening. This is uh, <laughs> this is episode number. Um, this is episode number uh, 116. So we've had 116 tete a tete. Face to face, uh, together. Anyway, so I want to share a little story about my dad that uh, that um, I think you'll. And it has to do with baseball. Um, so my dad, my dad was uh, <clears throat> ended up becoming a very successful attorney in San Francisco. Uh, San Francisco, uh, or, or president of the San Francisco Bar Association back in the '60s, and then president of the California Bar Association in the '70s. Very, very successful guy, great guy. And, uh, but in World War II, uh, he was picked uh, to, to be a commander of, it, of a destroyer escort. And ended up, ended up, it's a really long story. If anyone's interested, just shoot me an email. I'll, 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 I'll point you to where you can go find it. But ended up being the commander of a uh, destroyer escort, and, and they rammed and sunk a German submarine. Wow, and it was it was a big deal, right? And he got the that's, name. A, that's a big deal. Yeah, it was a pretty big deal, <laughs> and uh, it's a great story because not only he not only did he get the Navy Cross for it, but uh, forty years later he got um, <clears throat> he got uh, he got a letter, all in German, at his law office, wow. and obviously he couldn't read it. And one of the I guess there was a secretary there that was German, and she said, "Well, gee, Mister Abel, this is from the survivors." of U-66, the German submarine that you sank, that, you know, you were, you were kind enough to pick them up out of the water rather than letting them there to die on that night. Right, of, right. On that night of his 27th birthday, God. May 6th, actually his 28th birthday, May 6th, 1944. Uh, and he picked them up and they ended up um, being prisoners of war, the Germans. They picked cotton in Mississippi for the rest of the war. Wow. And so that was kind of a, a rough way to be a prisoner of war, I guess. Anyway, 40 years later, he gets this letter. And, and, uh, they, and, and the letter says, well, you know, we've always considered you, uh, Commander, as, as, our, as our savior because you didn't let us die that night. You actually. And so what we were thinking is maybe could you try to round up all the guys from the Buckley, your crew, because we've got all the guys from U-66. We'd love to have a reunion somewhere. <laughs> Holy smokes. So this was in, uh, this was in 1984. And so sure enough, uh, I don't know, six months, maybe a year later, uh, in Boston, they have a reunion. And the U-66 guys come over and the Buckley guys. And, you know, of course, the Buckley guys don't speak German. The German guys don't speak much English. <laughs> But they're all, you know, after a couple of these, they're I'm all, sure it all worked out. They're all just brothers and they're yakking away and laughing and they don't know. It's just, it was right. great. It was great. Um, not quite sure how I, oh, I remember. Okay. So, um, so on 9 12 2001, the day after 9 11, right? Uh, my dad, and my stepmom had uh, always had tickets to go to um, San Francisco Symphony, and uh, and so they decided the Symphony decided, look, we're not going to cancel. You know, this is probably a place where people need to come and go. And by then, my dad was starting to get into some severe memory loss, 
and wow. and he wasn't really sure too much about what was going on. Um, pleasant enough guy, but but just wasn't a hundred percent there. And so the symphony guys say, in 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 honor of of the people that you know died and all this stuff yesterday, they did a rendition of the of the national anthem. And wow. and my dad, they're all standing up, and so everyone's sitting down after the words, and my dad yells out, "Play ball!" <laughs> and there's this, there's this, you know, everyone's going, "Oh my God, who is that idiot?" And there was a a, a critic there, a, a you know, symphony critic there, and in the next couple of days, he wrote this this mean thing. There was, "Oh yeah, it was beautiful until after the national anthem, some Yahoo stands up and yells, "Play ball," you know, obviously in total." <laughs> You know, and right knucklehead, right? Some yeah. knucklehead. Anyway, blah, blah blah. So my my oldest niece writes this guy and says, "Look, you don't understand. This guy, World War II hero, Navy Cross, um, got together with the Germans. Blah blah blah. The whole story. You, you know, he's he's in severe memory right. loss right now. He is the first person that would have, if he'd known what was going on." would have stood up and, and, and all this kind of stuff and, and, and honored. And so the next day, the guy was kind enough to put a retraction in, in the examiner or the chronicle, whatever it was, right. and say, wow, yeah. wow. And so then that sort of, now this guy had a new story to work with, which was right. kind of a feel-good story. So anyway. an, an actual story, a real story. A real, the truth, <laughs> the truth. So I'm not quite sure well, that, how he, That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, I mean, that's just great. So That's awesome. anyway, we celebrated his birthday yesterday, 130. He's been gone for, he passed away just before he got to 90, but uh, great guy, great guy. Anyway, so that said, um, one thing we are offering still is a free private coaching call. It's only 10 minutes, but the thing here is you got to bring that one thing to the coaching call that uh, they just have not figured out. And if you could figure it out, it might be the big domino that would kind of knock down everything and really get you on the... Uh, path to to get the result that you want in your game. The way to get on that call, again, it's free, it's private, the three of us, a little conference call, is go over to goldballhunting.com, drop in a first name and email address, and you'll get immediate access to our online calendar scheduler where you can cherry pick a date and time that works best for you. So, uh, Mr. Jacklich, um, you've got something on your mind that... Uh, that you want to yak about, and we're not quite sure where we're going to take this in relation to in relation yeah. to the gold ball hunting subscribers and listeners and viewers and that kind of stuff. But I think we'll we'll figure out a way to drop a little value bomb on them <clears throat> in some form or fashion. What's on your mind? Oh, I, I, you know, hopefully, uh, uh, maybe a little wake up call or something. I don't know. Um, you know, I've been um, I've been listening to a lot of uh, talks by um, uh, Doctor Joe Dispenza. D I S P E N Z A. He's a, a, a neuro, I don't know, neuropsychologist, uh, understanding neuroplasticity. Um, and um, it's just amazing how, uh, you know, uh, the, the basic idea is this are you so stuck in your patterns, life patterns, daily routine, and then we'll transcend that and take it over to tennis? Um, your tennis routines that even though you're putting in the work, maybe technically on a stroke, maybe trying to learn how to play doubles better or learn some new ideas or new patterns or things. Um, are you, are you still just not crossing that threshold into that point where you're going to take all this work that you've done but you're not going to walk through the door and bring those things with you and, and try it and step into the uncharted waters, the unknown of whether, whether, you know, you've been doing the work and whether it's actually going to be successful or not. Um, cause this is one of those things that, you know, in, in any athletics at all, there is a point where you have to totally, um, surrender to, to performing and there's there's a there's a sense of detachment of the result it's simply performing 
carrying all this hard work you've done. I've hit a, you know, so many forehands down the line, blah, blah, blah. And now all of a sudden in a match, there it is kind of just unconscious almost. Um, so I guess, so I guess the idea is this, is, is, is that, you know, you, you know, you, you, you know, the viewers out there are, are the, the the, our students, the ones we're coaching, do, do you have the courage to, to walk through the door, bring the hard work with you, and then surrender to the result and simply perform, simply implement, and get out of the way mentally, get out of the way mentally? I don't know. So, yeah, so no. that's, is that, you know, kind of... <laughs> Absolutely. It's, um, well, there's a couple ways to, to think about it is, uh, you know, I got a couple of buddies who haven't played tournaments for a while. And the reason they haven't is because they've been working on stuff. You know, they kind of got a reality check playing, playing some tournaments and which is what you do, right? You go out there and you put yourself right. out there in the tournament scene. You go, Oh, I can see in tournaments, uh, in practice, I I've, I'm, I'm pretty good in this area, but when I get in the tournament, I'm not. So I'm going to go and practice my little butt off day in and day out, on the court, off the court, read all the books, watch all the videos, talk to all the people, and I'm going to really immerse myself in this practice. And, and, and then I see him, I say, God, man, I know you've been working on this thing for, what, like eight months. I say, well, you know, when's your next tournament? And they go, well, you know, I'm not quite ready. And I'm, yeah. I'm going to go, well, maybe you are. You don't know. <laughs> right. You might be complete. In fact, you might be over ready. Right. You might be overripe. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly right. And, and I said, how are you going to know if you don't go out there? And it's kind of, so to me, it's like this excuse to not get right. back out there until there's a sense of, well, I'm going to perfect this thing, which we can never do. That will no. never, ever happen. I don't care. How it's a bit of a moving a, target. How fat a sitter you get, you're going to miss some from time to time. And that's just it's that's just the way it is. So if you're yeah. thinking that you're going to practice something to death until you perfect it, never going to happen. So no, it, it yeah. Go ahead, go ahead, keep going. Um, yeah, and then the other thought I had, I forgotten it. I was I was going on talking <laughs> about that. Um, I think there becomes a level of, and it all works together, there's a level of trust that, that right. you need to believe in, that you've, you've put in whatever work you've put in, and you can never measure it and say, well, it's too little, or it's just enough, or, it's, or I'm, 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 I'm over ready, I'm super ready. Right. You don't know until you get out there, and there becomes this this thing where you need to trust that that you don't have to manufacture in a match what you right. may be tinkered with and experimented with and manufactured in practice that as you just talked about with neuroplastic with neuroplasticity myelination you have to trust that the myelination is is actually there and that it it it, it may be there but there's a chance you could get in the way of it Right. If you don't, if you don't trust that you don't have to consciously manufacture it. So I don't know if that's, if that's part well, of what Dr. I think Dispenza it is, is I talking think, about, but. Well, the, the, you know, the big, the big challenge is this, is that there, there is no building a new neural pathway without making a different choice. So as much as, uh, you know, somebody's practicing, you know, I'm not quite ready yet. I'm not quite ready yet. The challenge there is that, when you finally, when you say you're ready and now you're going to go play, you know, a tournament, there's a whole host of environmental, emotional, spiritual factors at work that were never in play while you were practicing. So you're actually, you have no idea how, now you've got to handle this whole set of new influences on top of, I think I trust what I've been working on. Yeah. Good luck with that. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's such a, I mean, it's such a, so, so the idea is this, is that, is that you have to be playing practice sets. And when you go to play those practice sets while you're doing the work is you have to make a new choice in order for us to rebuild and to build a new neural pathway of confidence, of trust, of assuredness. And that is, 
I'm going to walk through this doorway into this new thing that I'm bringing with me. I'm going to walk through. I'm going to trust it. I'm going to surrender to it. And I'm just going to perform it. Winning or losing the set is not a good barometer as to whether or not you're actually being successful at this new thing. And so that's a big challenge for, I think, most definitely, you know, a lot of league players and, you know, uh, uh, players at the national level as well, you know, playing the playing the gold ball events is that you you have to be willing just to step into the unknown in these uncharted waters because that's where you're going to get this new this new pathway. And while the and, and while you're doing that, here's the cool thing is that the old pathway is actually melting for, for lack of a better term. It's actually shrinking while you're building the new one. But you have to keep stepping into that new one, that new decision to reinforce it and actually make it happen and have it be an actual, um, let's say, functioning and um, um, stable pathway, I guess is, is, a, is a word there. So if anybody's interested, absolutely, I'd say look up you know, Dr. Joe Dispenza, listen to his latest stuff, and he will give you a very clear picture. And this isn't woo-woo stuff. This is actual scientific methodology he has rooms full of people as they're doing their meditations on heart monitors doing brain scans this is not stuff that's just like ethereal oh what if stuff this is actually documented um scientific studies um the one study he did is uh, i'm bringing this in just because this is the power of your of your own mind and that is they did a study with um men um uh one one group was actually doing curls, right? Uh, and I forget what the weight was, whatever they were doing, doing curls for their bi build up the biceps. One group was simply meditating, imagining they were doing it and imagining what they would feel like while they were lifting, right? Feeling the muscle tension and doing the moves while in meditation doing it. The guys that the guys that lifted weight, I forget what their percentage was of increase, but it wasn't that really that greater. The guys that lifted no weight, I think this was like a 30-day study, actually gained 13% muscle growth. The guys who just visualized it. That didn't lift a weight, yeah. an actual weight. Yeah. So, so this stuff is like, I find it fascinating, and I think you know, I'm always trying to incorporate the newest thing to understand who I'm dealing with as I'm coaching because it gives me better understanding with, with who I'm coaching to kind of understand like uh, what, what avenue, how am I going to do an end around and sneak in and, and really get this in there? Um, and it's, I find it really, um, it's fun and it, uh, it gets people kind of off the, like locked into their tennis box yeah, and kind of get them out to see it a different way, you know? So well, look, anyway. I mean, one thing that we always talk about is that, you know, guys, if you, if you're sin sincere about becoming a tennis player, a, a better tennis player, Obviously, you got to do some work, right? So we're just assuming anyone listening to the podcast is doing some amount of work. And for the, some amount. And for those of you who are doing a ton of work, but you're stuck, you're not getting the result that you want in matches, something, because there's always a, let's call it a, a goal, but it's a result that we want, right? We're, we're here and we want a different result. And so right. we do the work and what's, what's the work that we do between those two those two things in the timeline, which is present day to the result we want. And if you're struggling with trying to find, when am I going to get to that result? And you're doing a ton of work. Well, first of all, you know, Jeff and I want to, you know, give you tons of respect for at least getting out there and trying to do the work and going through the frustration. But I'd love to, even if it's just in the comments, uh, yeah. it's just it's kind of read What's the thing that you're working on to get that different result? Maybe let us know how you're doing it. And, and, and if you're not getting the result, um, then maybe what we'd like for you to do is to get on a free coaching call with us. Again, it's only 10 minutes, but I think that's, that's a great topic today, Jeff. It, it, it's common where, where we get players, right. guys and gals who are committed to doing the work, but they're, they're just not getting to that end result that they want. So we'd love to get you on the coaching call. It's free. It is 10 minutes. And believe me, in 10 minutes, we can get a lot of work done uh, to help yeah. you point you towards that, uh, towards that result. The way to do it, 
Go over to goldballhunting.com, first name, email address, click the button and you'll get access to our online calendar scheduler. And if you're already on our email list, all of our emails, somewhere in there, there's a link that you can click that will take you over to the, uh, over to the somewhere. calendar. Somewhere. It, 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 it kind of moves around a little bit. Just depending. start clicking. Just <laughs> start <laughs> pressing buttons. Um, so listen, uh, Jeff. Uh, it is it is your time to shine again. Woo-hoo. You've already been shining all the whole episode shiny. here. Shiny. I actually well, shaved yesterday, so I'm shiny. Okay. okay. Um, so like us, share us, please subscribe. Let us know what you think down below. All right, guys. Beautiful. Get out there today, wherever that is. Help someone else have a spectacular day. Let's uh, let's do this again tomorrow. I can't wait. <laughs>